So they say men don't talk. They say women don't listen. Says who? No, men talk. Just not as much as we do. So I'm getting in 10 minutes, getting their stories, getting out. We chat and we dialogue and we talk and we flow and we vibe and it's fun, it's free. This is Discussions. With Rayshawn Nate. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Rayshawn and Tay, y'all. I am back with discussions. You know the premise of the show. They say men don't talk, but men do talk. They just don't talk as much as we do. So I got my stopwatch here. You guys, we got 10 minutes to get his story. Tell everybody who you are. My name is Craig Holliday. I'm one of the associate pastors at the Brooklyn Tabernacle here in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, I've been on staff here for the last 15 years. and. Uh, I am over a number of ministries here, and uh, I serve here uh, faithfully. So let's get in, let's get to it. So you know, I want to give you that scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians, is it 13? You can help me with yes. it. It says, when I was a child, I, like, I spoke as a child, and I did childish things. And I want you to take that, I want to approach that with you from the standpoint of relationships. Right. And you know, a while back, you know, you're married now and all that, mm -hmm. but a while back, you were single, and you were living a life. Right. And you were um, living with a, a woman, like right. a lot of men do. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to give me, take me from beginning, middle, and end, a little bit about your character and that relationship. Well, at that time, when I moved in with the, my girlfriend at the time, uh -huh. um, I was uh, probably one year out of undergrad. Uh, and so we moved in out of convenience. Um, she was three years older than me, so she kind of knew what she wanted in life. I was just still trying to figure myself out, mm -hmm. you know, you get one year away from school and um, you're trying to land a, the, the ideal job mm -hmm. and go down the right career path. And so we moved in together and uh, at that time I was very immature. Okay. And so I can relate to when Paul is making that transition after talking about love because 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. Yes. Yes. Um, but then he makes a transition where he says, when I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child, I spoke as a child. Uh, he goes through that. He says, but I put childish things away. I wasn't ready to put childish things away. So I had a lot of childish behaviors in me, but her expectation was, is that I was gonna grow up mm -hmm. and, and become this man that she wanted me to become. So now, well, you guys can't see Craig, but Craig is the, what, the 6'4", six, 6'2", six, tall, fine, six, four. Don't chocolate. take inches from Okay, 6'4", <laughs> so ladies, you know when we see him, it, like the Idris Jr. But now, so you're living with her, and I'm yeah. sure she, being a woman, she probably wanted to be married and wanted to do happily ever after with you. Right. And that just wasn't on, in your mind frame at the time? Well, I wouldn't even say it wasn't in my mind frame. It wasn't something I even considered, because here I was, uh, still uh, playing sports, mm -hmm. Um, just starting out on my career path at the time, I was working for a Fortune 500 company. I was working for American Express at the time. You when had we it going on. Dating and uh, <laughs> going on, okay, <laughs> as they say. And, and so at that time, I was still, um, I, my mindset was still living like I was free, even though single, I should say, but I was living with this woman. Okay. And you are born and raised in church. Yes. So you're a church guy. Well, I was born, in, I had a drug problem. My mom drugged me to church every I like Sunday, that. so I, I, yes. I wasn't say I was born and raised. I was I wasn't born again though. Okay. So I, I played church. You play so you was in church, but church wasn't in you as exactly okay. no yeah All I right. didn't have a relationship with Christ. Okay. So take me to the point where you felt like you know what I'm living with this woman and you know uh, but something's not right. But I, I want to make a change. I right. want to grow up. Well, the change um, happened because of her getting tired mm -hmm. of all the stuff I put her through. I mean, we lived together for six and a half years. And so I, I kind of understand sometimes when people say, why do people stay in a bad relationship for so long? Um, you're, you're hoping that this person would see the light and change. Right. And so at some point in time, she got to a place where she said, it's not gonna change. He's not gonna change. He doesn't wanna change. Um, and so um, she decided it'd be best if I move out. And so she moved out. And so when she moved out, now I'm coming home to this empty apartment um, and now I have time to reflect because all that time I was always going. I was always on the move. I was still traveling a lot. Um, but you know, I always had that mindset that when I get home, it's gonna be a certain situation, but now I'm coming home and it's empty. I'm coming to this apartment, it's empty. There's only so many ESPN reruns you can watch <laughs> um, on Sports Center, And so now I have to do some self-reflection. Mm -hmm. And so as I begin to self-reflect, um, I begin to realize that 
Um, I was this guy who was pretty empty and pretty immature. Were you calling her and saying like, baby come back or anything like that or no? No, I, I didn't call her. I would try to reach out to her from time to time. However, she she was really trying to move on with her life. Tired. Yeah, she, she was tired. tired. I, I put it through quite a bit. And at any point in those six years, you just, did you think about saying, you know, I want to marry you, I want to... I considered it, okay. but being that I was still uh, reasoning and, and speaking like a child, um, and acting like a child, um, I never took it any further than actually like actually going and getting a ring or anything like that. It was just really uh, a thought, a fleeting thought that came once in a while and when I would do something wrong um, or get caught in my mess, um, I, I'd try to make amends that way and say, you know, I, I, we're going to get married and, and, and stuff, but that was just an excuse I was giving her, just to, to keep her right where. Right, right, yeah. Did you know in your heart she wasn't the one? Well, you know what? Um, I, I can't even say that okay. because uh, my heart was very dark. Okay. Yeah, I, I, was, I was in a real dark place. Um, I was in a really dark place when it comes to uh, feelings and emotions. I, I had none. Okay. And that was probably one of her biggest challenges because I was this really, uh, she considered me a very cold and calculating guy. So different from the Craig that I know today. Now take me to the moment where you said, you know what, there was change. I think you, you were, you maybe tell me about the conversation you had with your mom. Well, what had happened before that conversation, um, I'm sitting home one night um, in, the, uh, in the apartment and mm -hmm. I went and grabbed this, uh, well, they weren't DVDs, it's VHS. If any of you Ooh, know that, I'm dating you know. myself. Yes. Yeah, and it was actually um, a VHS of uh, a T.D. Jakes uh, manpower. It was his original. And the people who purchased it for me was my mom and your mom. Yes. They gave it to me, and uh, they had given it to me two years prior. Okay. I had never looked at it, tossed it in my con uh, the, 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 the shelf where the uh, TV sat on, and I just happened to take it out of the cellophane and put it in the... VHS and started watching it and um, in that manpower uh, series that um, Bishop T.D. Jakes was doing uh, he was talking about the baggage men carry mm -hmm. and the things that we have never faced up and talked about and addressed mm -hmm. in our lives and how those things keep us from walking out our lives the way God has called us to walk them out mm -hmm. and as he was going through his, his sermon I'm sitting there and I'm saying wow this guy is reading my mail He's, reading, he's literally mm -hmm. reading my mail. He's sitting at my kitchen table. He's telling me a lot about who I am. And so he began to talk about um, broken, uh, dealing with the, the, the abandonment issues of having a dad who was never there and stuff. And I, I had to come at the end of that sermon, come to a place where I realized that um, I had never dealt with the abandonment issues that I, would, I, I had when it came to my father because my dad was out of my life when I was 10 years old. So you think that was the basis of maybe how you treated women in the past? Oh, yeah. I, I would say that was definitely the catalyst for how I treated women. And, and it wasn't that I uh, was physically abusive mm -hmm. or anything like that because I can never imagine being physically abusive to a woman. Um, I was more emotionally, emotionally abusive. abusive. And so I think that was even worse um, and because uh, I just uh, I, I would not um, allow anyone in. I was very guarded, very protective, um, and one of the things that um, my girlfriend, when I lived with her, would always say is that, um, I don't know who you are. I've been living with you all this time, and you've never allowed me to know who you are. That's scary. Now, yes. one thing, I know people make mistakes, they mess up, but I believe it's how you fix it. And I think some men, men have an issue with going back and saying, I, I, I apologize, do you forgive me? Did you ever reach back out? And apologize. And we got a minute and 33 seconds. Wow. Did you ever go reach back and apologize? Yes, I have. And you know what? I don't think it was um, sufficient enough. So if I ever saw her again, I would really apologize because I'm at a totally different place now mm -hmm. in my life. Um, the way I feel to life now is totally different. Where are you today? Um, today, I'm in a place where I've been married successfully for uh, just under 19 years. Um, I have a beautiful wife named Vanessa, um, and uh, we serve here at the church at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Um, we serve in our premarital ministry. Um, we serve in our marriage ministry. Um, I'm over the men's ministry. Go figure. Awesome. Awesome, I've, right? I've been over the men's ministry for the last uh, 10 plus years. 
Um, and it's 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 very vibrant. Um, do you talk to men about this type of these type of issues? Yes, okay. um, I talk to men. I, I do articles. Um, and my wife and I uh, do couples counseling. Um, I do marriage counseling. I do biblical. Uh, I I mentor a lot of guys, and so I, I try to point God guys towards Jesus because mm -hmm. he's the answer. He's the antidote for our sin sickness. Boys play house. Men get married. Boys make babies, men rear children. Boys won't raise their own children, men will raise someone else's. Boys seek to simply survive their women's disrespect, men seek to understand her with their heart. Boys are content with female companionship, men welcome intimacy. Boys seek popularity, men win respect. Boys cast blame, men own responsibility. Boys invent excuses for their failures, men produce strategies for success. Boys look for someone else to take care of them. Men look for someone to take care of. Discussions, an R&B Media Group production.